So one of my viewers asked me if I could watch this video, it's called the once in a century flood that brought hope to drought stricken communities. So really interested to see what this is all about. It sounds like a interesting situation or event in Australia's history. Tell me if you know about it. Looking at the image here, it looks like in, it could be in the outback, I don't know, but drought stricken communities. Tell me if you know about this, tell me if you were affected by it even. Uh, let's watch. You've heard the old expression, be careful what you wish for. Well, in the outback right now, our farmers are getting exactly what they wished for, and they're getting it in spades. The decade-long drought may have finally broken, although it's taken a once-in-a-hundred-year flood to do it. An enormous body of water is working its way south and west, covering an area half the size of Europe. Farms are cut off, livestock is threatened, and most of the locals couldn't be happier. Well, Sorry. The land is alive again, and I can tell you, it's one amazing sight. Well, a decade-long drought? That's actually quite mad. How did that... That must have really had a, such a bad effect on people who lived in the area, worked in the area. And a once-in-a-century flood that was half the size of Europe? That's the thing, when you hear things like that, you really understand how big Australia is. And I think a problem like this that turned into something that could possibly really help people is actually sounds like it could be an amazing story. Far beyond where bitumen turns to dirt, we find it. A vast inland sea, a sight as fantastic as it is rare. Not Whoa. for 100 years have these vast plains of Queensland and New South Wales seen such a watery spectacle. There, biggest you can get them. Oh, just mad, massive. Yeah, like, it's the biggest flood in, ever, since history, you know. But such are the cruelties of the bush that the very thing drought-devastated farmers have craved so desperately for so long, water, now threatens to overwhelm Dal McGrath and his mates. Water's gone where it's never ever been before, so you know, I, I hope they don't come any bigger than this. That's actually what I was thinking. Having a decade long drought, you would probably somehow get used to it, somehow get used to the lay of the land where places are dry and things like that. Having that flood, although it can bring benefits of having the, the water there where there was a drought, but it can also cause a lot of problems. You can see it with the the sheep here as well. So big that this is a military style operation to save valuable stock from the rising tide. I wouldn't have imagined how much water could come down to this country. No, and it's uh, like it's just like a great big wall of water coming and, uh, and it's going to cover a lot of country. You've survived a pretty severe drought. Will you survive the flood? I have to. You know. No choice. Sounds quite scary. This is a truly Australian struggle of hard men against the harshest forces of nature. Blokes from hundreds of Ks have come to help, all mindful that sometime soon their futures too may dangle by a 30 metre thread. I'm helping say so when we get into trouble, people come and help us. <laughs> if it does go to your place, what do you face losing? Um, fair few sheep. Probably 3,000, I reckon. Hmm. Mm. Heartbreaking. So not something that you're happy about, hey? Right. Is that everything? That's a fair few, yeah. yeah. But what can you do? Like, it's just come that quick and... Poor guy, man. The amount of water spreading across the floodplains of this country has to be seen to be believed. By its very nature, this flood isn't particularly deep, but its magnitude is mind-boggling. It started up in Queensland, it's now peaking in parts of New South Wales, and it's expected to flow all the way down to South Australia. Now, this hasn't happened to this scale in this drought-stricken land for a century. It's really like an ocean. There's a large bucket of water coming down. There's a large bucket of water across the country. <laughs> you call it a bucket. Some say it's half the size of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a big bucket. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
This great Australian flood began a month ago when it bucketed down in spectacular fashion across central Queensland, spreading havoc and water across our northeast and spreading joy for environmental scientists like Martin Toms. And it's bloody magnificent. Last time I was out here it was bone dry. And so to see wall to wall water is just fantastic. From the Paru across to the Warrego, the Condamine Ballon and well beyond, a mighty wave of water is working its way down to the Darling River and ultimately, hopefully, to the parched Murray Basin and its starved lower lakes. So how much of this country is in flood? A hell of a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they haven't had this volume of water in a hundred years. So this is a one in a hundred year event. The thing is that we've got all of I didn't realise that was a real frog. I thought that was a fake frog like toy or something that's just like hopping around. Look at the colour of it, it's, it looks so unique as well. Uh, but yeah, when you see that image, the wide, wide angle shot there of the, the land just covered in water. Like was this known about beforehand? Did it did they know that this was coming? It seems like hard to believe they wouldn't because it had such a, a big effect, but I just don't know. You just well, never know. The river system is running at one go now, and I can't remember when that last happened. That is really special. The result is epic, cinematic. For the best part of a decade, even only a few months ago, the view out here was nothing but blood-red dust. Now there's water as far as the eye can see. Caramel-coloured arteries are pumping life back into the land and pride into the heart of grazier Dave Fisher. It really does look like arteries. If you wanted to duplicate this on the Gold Coast, you'd pay a bloody fortune for it, you know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, it's, just, uh, it's just amazing, you know? So come here for your holidays. Well, well, I mean, you know... Inland Australia's got it all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the few dry spots on Dave's property in far northwestern New South Wales, and he's trying to keep it that way, building a levee in anticipation that the waters north of here will soon arrive. It's like a creeping giant, and um, you, you may look out through like the grassland there tonight, and there's nothing, and by the morning there's a there's a there's a waterfront all uh, coming out of the grass, and it just. Um, yeah, it's a creepy joint. And it creeps up on you and it destroys property. Yeah, it does a fair bit of damage and there's no doubt about it. It's going to cause a lot of inconvenience for a lot of people across a, a very wide area. Life 150 clicks out the back of Burke was always going to be remote. But these floods have made the Fishers' Brindon Gabba station utterly isolated. Dave's wife, Kylie and the kids have to rely on the most basic supplies, the things we all take for granted being airlifted in. That's bread. Yes, bread. And as for so many kids on the land, the Fisher's classrooms at home. But because of the flood, their tutor hasn't been able to get to them for weeks and won't for another month. Oh, that's interesting. That's like when, when was this actually, when did this actually happen? It seems like looking at the equipment in that, it must have been, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, something like that. But, I mean, pre-COVID and things, seeing kids work, like, go to school from home, I never really knew that was even a thing. But I guess when it, you think about the families who are in these remote areas, it must have been, like, they must have been doing this for, like, quite a long time. But just interesting to see. I never really knew that sort of thing happened um, so long yesterday ago. Yesterday, we were helping Dad muster some sheep in. Um, and to get away from the flood. Except for the satellite school, Kylie is on her own. But for all the extra work, it sure beats the last decade of drought. <laughs> it's lovely for the children too, but because the children, all our children, uh, 10 and under, really have lived the entire drought, so they're now really seeing what this country can be like. And for Must me, the positives so are probably that hopefully there's not as much dust in my house. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Someone not one bit worried about dust is Kylie and David's neighbour on the swollen Paru River. So the water has just poured in, hasn't it? It has, yeah. The score in this little yard here. The water's drowned his backyard, his sheds, his old tractor, and it got so bad his kids and wife have been evacuated by chopper. Here he is. Get there, Mark. 
No wonder Mark Pritchard's in need of a good cuppa. I thought you might like a cup of tea. Yeah, I'll tell you what, we better not fuck around there. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it was coming, but did it also still take you by surprise? Yeah, it actually did. It, we get pretty good warning that it is coming down and, mm. and it's sort of that thing you're waiting for it and when it comes, it comes pretty quick. And Worried? Yeah, we were a little bit concerned at times, like the, the torrent, when it comes through here, the tide, or the tide, the water's running pretty quick and, um, you know, you ha hope to think they'd built the house all right because uh, it wasn't going to wash away, you know. Mm. But it's all good when it rains. Things you have to think it, about in that sort of situation. It's all worth it, you know. House could be gone. For all the mess, for all the mud, the overwhelming sense here is relief. What does all this water mean to you? It means the world to us, Tara. It really is like, um, you know, it gets so dry during the drought and so depressing during the drought. When the water arrives like this down the floodplains, it really lifts our spirits, lifts our hearts and, and, uh, and lifts our bank account. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Tara, we've had the uh, apparently one in 100 year drought. This is the one in 100 year flood. Let's hope we have a one in 100 year income. <laughs> we're, we're just like the, all the frogs and the birds, like we come to life and, you know, we, um, you know, we sort of hibernate during the droughts a bit and then we come to life during when all these you know, rivers run. And it's not just the farmers rejoicing. As life explodes thanks to this vast inland sea, scientists like University of New England's Martin Toms are also celebrating. When water breaks out of the river channel and then starts um, moving out across the floodplain, it, um, amazing things happen you get things coming out of the floodplain soils. Soils that have been dry for 40, 50 odd years. Mm. You still get animals coming out of the soil after that length of time being no. dry. Yes. Well, so they're alive after half a century? That's right, yeah. Um, so the entire... That's crazy. I never actually knew things like that existed. How, how interesting. There must be not many places something like this can happen in the world or that's really happened like on this scale obviously most countries are not even as big as this flood probably never mind uh, the change in climate change in weather it's pretty amazing especially like like Australia being so rich in wildlife already like the change in this landscape from so dry to so wet and then all the changes in nature that that brings wildlife as well such a special occasion. The entire food web will just be bursting with life and be really energised. Sounds like Mother Nature might be having a party. Of course it is. It's great. It's a great time to be out here having a party with it as well. But back at the sheep lift, any parting is still a way off yet. Mm. Can you get all the sheep out nah. before? No, nah, we'd be pushing, pushing it, but nah, we won't get them all. But what we can save is better than none, isn't it? Mother Nature controls us all, doesn't she? And this is not the end of it. When Dal McGrath's finished with helping out his neighbour, he's got his own problems at home to worry about. What's your property looking like at the moment, then? Water. <laughs> it's a simple water. You're just one big lake. Yeah, more and more water. It's peaked there today at the biggest levels ever. Um, so why aren't you at home saving your place? Well, my wife says she can handle it. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> and Fair handle enough. it, wife Sandy, along with young Jack and Katie, surely can. But there is an awful lot to handle. Go hard at it, mate. I've been making big... The levee oh. has broken, and it's back-breaking work to stem the flow. Katie, grab some big rocks over there and fill oh, them up. She's quick. so young, man. She's getting involved as well. We'll end up with too much water in the tight. The water is within metres of the front door and road access to their home, Wan Cobra, has been completely cut since Christmas and will be for months to come. Um, if we can just keep the water out and have our little dry donut in the middle of this lake. <laughs> so you're stuck now? No, we're stuck now. Now that we It's actually quite scary to look at. It's quite so much water and of course now there is no way out. Mum says you're the man on the land when Dad's away. Um, yeah, she always tells me like, um, I can't do everything by myself, so I have to lend a helping hand. No. Yeah. And there's a lot of work to do when it's wet, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of work. <laughs> Next door at the Fishers, they welcome the work and the big wet. Thankfully, their yards are high and dry, 
but all around is ample feed and water. So for the first time in a decade, Kylie and Dave are allowing themselves to hope that the dreaded drought might finally be done and dusted. I suppose, I suppose the best way to, like, to sum it up, Tara, is like, uh, we're still in the trenches, but the shelling stopped and uh, our full division's coming up for uh, reinforcements. <laughs> <laughs> you still can still have a good humour about it. Man. For so long, we've looked inland and all we've seen is drought. Now, there's a new show in town. And this water's got a long way to run. Parts of this wide, thirsty land will be in flood till June. For farmers, for critters, for all of us, this is a once-in-a-century wonder. And I'm flying over your land. It's still red underneath, but there is this beautiful green hue, isn't there? What's it like to see it like that? It's uplifting. It's, um, the best way to describe it is just it's a, it's a psychological boost, I guess you could say. It's a, it's a, it just changes your whole attitude. Like, you know, you'd have to urge your viewers, Tara, to really, you know, get out and have a look at it while it's good. You know, it's, a, it's probably Australia at its best right now. Like, it's just, it doesn't get much better, you know. Hello, I'm Nick McKenzie. Thanks for watching. That was quite an amazing story, like, so yeah, that was, I don't know when, could be 10, 15 years ago, as I mentioned, but what's the current state of that area? How, how long did that flood stay for? Uh, did the drought come back, anything like that? It's like, very interesting, like, the, just how quickly it changed and seeing the people in those, for me, looking at it as an outsider, it looks very precarious, that house and that small island, but they seemed all in very good spirits and happy with it. So yeah, going from a drought to flood, but tell me what you remember about this, if you know about it, and what the current state of affairs in this area is. Thanks.